up until that 40, we'd done everything right. The two leading cars, Weber and Hamilton. We got Mark back out in the lead ahead of Lewis. We managed to uh, jump Lewis at the stop with Sebastian as well. We're back with a 1-2 for Red Bull. Until that 40, everything was looking good. On that back straight, Sebastian managed to take 32 metres out of Mark, which put him into a position where he was alongside and, and slightly ahead. I have already passed Mark and then obviously tried to slowly come back to the right. It was actually over, you know, pretty quickly to be honest. In eight sectors, you know, everything was going fine and then all of a sudden, you know, things started to change uh, you know, pretty quickly. Oh dear, they come together! Weber and Vettel have come together! What was going on there? Through goes Jensen Button, ahead goes Lewis Hamilton. Right, Sebastian Vettel went right into the side of Mark Webber. There would probably be a difference of opinion until we go to our graves. I'm not the kind of guy that pushes uh, all the fall to, to one guy. With an incident like that, it's a racing incident. I think it's wrong to, to say Mark was at fault or Sebastian was at fault. Obviously at that time I was the leading car, so usually the leader then dictates where, where to go. My opinion hasn't changed too much, you know, after the race. You know, you can say whose fault was it? So, well, you know, we went down there, it was close. We touched, said we moved across a bit, okay, that's what happened. You know, you've got two guys that are going for the lead of the Grand Prix. The last person they want to be um, beaten by is their, is their teammate. And unfortunately, um, you know, we all saw the incident. At no point in time was uh, Mark told to either slow down or let Sebastian pass, or, or vice versa. You know, the, the rules of engagement you know, were quite simply that uh, uh, you know, we trusted in the drivers to, to give each other room and respect. I think it has been made pretty clear. You know, obviously, there was a lot made up by the press, and uh, those sort of stories are much more interesting to read and to listen to rather than something boring and nice. Everything is, not in shi everything is shiny. One of the race engineers, Kyron Pilbeam, has taken a bit of flack recently, Mark's engineer. Yeah, he was, had no instruction to tell Mark to move out of the way. That you know, is 100% um, you know, clear. No, he didn't uh, get any instructions to, to tell me to move over. You can put two and two together and get 100, but there wasn't a huge amount to it, to be honest. Absolutely not. I mean, our priority is that we want to see a Red Bull car win. We don't care if it's a Mark Webber victory or a Sebastian Vettel victory. There's no either driver, Mark or myself, being favoured in any, any way. It's something that everyone should get over. It, it, is, it is something, you know, I wouldn't stay at the team if I wasn't, you know, fair that, you know, I was getting a fair crack at it. Mark knows the situation internally. He knows how popular he is within the team. He's always had you know, a huge amount of backing, you know, from the team when he had his accident with his leg, uh, you know, being put in a pin. There was never any question of looking at a replacement driver or anything like that. I'm absolutely comfortable in this team. You know, they give me the best chance possible to go out there week in, week out. The guys prepare the cars exactly the same. And, of course, you know, Helmut, you know, he brought Sebastian through, you know, he speaks the same language. Of course, there might be a little bit of emotion there, but in terms of, you know, we're not in a position where it was with Michael and Rubens at Ferrari, you know, all those years ago, where you can say, okay, let's just put all our cash on one, one car. I'm absolutely comfortable with, with my relationship with Christian, you know, for us to think that you're gonna have a seamless relationship over five years and challenging what we're challenging for, of course there's gonna be some bumps and speed humps along the way. That's normal. I guarantee you next time it might be a little bit different of course how we handle things but not massively because well, you know they need to we need to race you know the team you have to take your hat off all the fans need to take their hat off um, you know because they've got two cars out it's a horrible position for them to you know, let us, you know, get the boxing gloves on, but that's what everyone wants. There'd be uproar if we didn't have that either, and there's uproar the other way as well. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a real fine line. Fundamentally, it's right to allow the drivers to race each other. I think it'd be wrong as a team, and for Formula One, to say, to dictate after the first corner and say, okay, you know, racing's over between the two of you. I don't think, you know, that's not what Red Bull's all about. That's not what I think Formula One should be about. The most important that you don't get all this into you and into your head so you know you just keep on doing what you were doing before and not uh, trying to be 
super careful or the other way around, super aggressive. In the cold light of day, it was a racing accident. Um, nothing more, nothing less, and uh, I'm sure it won't happen again.